Welcome back, Sethling here. You're watching my Turtle Programming Tutorial Series. This is intended as a general programming tutorial for people with zero programming experience at all. It uses the Computercraft mods. These turtles are from the Computercraft mod. And you can find that in the video description, although I'm going to be using the Feed the Beast mod pack in these videos. Uh, turtles use Lua, which is a programming language, but the principles that uh, that I'll be teaching are common to most programming languages, so it should be very useful. And I encourage you to follow along on your own, and hope you learn something valuable. So today's topic is going to be functions. Functions are little bits of code that are kind of grouped together and that you can reuse. So I'm going to create a new program. I'm going to call this program Shuffle. It's going to make the turtle do eh, kind of a little dance. Okay, so I'm going to create a function first thing. So I use the word function, and then I name the function. I'm going to call this function turnaround, and then I put two parentheses after that. This function is going to just make the turtle turn right twice. That's all it's going to do. Uh, you'll notice that is analogous. Whoops. That is analogous to turning around. Uh, if it just turns right twice, I could also have it turn left twice. It would do the same thing. Uh, then I'm just going to have a while loop. And the condition is going to be true, so this is just going to keep looping forever until I terminate it. I'm going to have the turtle move forward one, and then I'm going to have the turtle turn around by calling my function. When you, when you write a function name like this and put the parentheses, it's called calling it. It just means it's going to run the code in the function. So this is going to keep looping forever. It's going to move the turtle forward, and then it's going to call this turnaround function, which is going to have the turtle turn right twice. So when we go ahead and run this program, shuffle, oh, whoops, I must have, uh, oh, I think I forgot some parentheses. Uh, hold on, control exit, whoops, let me try running it again, ah, shuffle, what was the problem? It was on line two. So when you get an error like this, this is actually valuable, it says what line the program failed on, so shuffle colon two, that means line two of program shuffle. Uh, it attempted to index question mark a nil, a nil value. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> that's kind of a technical um, wording there, but on line two, okay, so of course turn dot turn right is not the correct thing. So you can see if you just read the error, it can be pretty easy to diagnose what the actual problem is. I just used the wrong wording there. Okay, so now if I use the shuffle program, He's going to move forward, turn around, and he does a little dance. And like I said, he's going to keep doing this forever because the while loop has true as its condition that's never going to end. Okay, I'm going to terminate that by holding down Control t for a second. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more useful, though. I'm going to turn him around. Um, I'm going to create a program called Forward. Now, the goal of this program is just that the turtle is going to move forward indefinitely, as long as he still has fuel, and he is going to, this is going to be a bit more robust than we saw before. He's going to go through obstacles and uh, and do things to make sure he can keep moving forward. So I'm going to create a couple functions first that I'll need. First one is refuel. And this is going to select the first slot and call refuel, uh, refueling uh, from one item from the first slot. So this is a chunk of code that often will go together, and it's going to be reusable wherever we want in this program, which is really useful. Okay, so the next function I want to do is called dig forward. Uh, this is going to, uh, it's going to have a while loop. So it's going to use while turtle.detect. Uh, detect, turtle, sorry, turtle.detect is a function that will return a value which is true if the, if there is something in front of the turtle and it's false otherwise. So this condition is going to be true as long as there's something in the front of the turtle, and as long as there's something in the front of the turtle, we want the turtle to dig. And he's going to dig forward. That's what that that's what that uh, turtle's dig turtle dot dig function does. And so that's the while loop, and that's all the code for dig forward. Now I'm going to make an, another function called move forward, and this is the function we're going to call over and over again as we want the turtle to move forward. Okay, so there's a couple things we want to do. First, we want to check if the fuel level of the turtle is too low. And if it is too low, then we want the turtle to refuel. So if turtle.getFuelLevel is less than 10, then we'll just call that refuel function. I'm not going to call turtle.refuel. 
because I actually want to call the code that we wrote up above here, uh, which which actually does call the turtle dot refuel, because it does a couple of lines in one line, and it's just easier to be able to group those together, and it's easier to read this move forward function if I have that refuel right there that does both of the things we need to do to actually refuel. Uh, okay, so then I'm going to have another while loop that uh, says while turtle dot forward equals false do. Okay, so what does this do? Uh, this calls the turtle dot forward function, and which tries to move the turtle forward. Now that function either returns true or false. If the turtle is able to move forward, it returns true. If it wasn't, then it returns false. So basically, if the turtle moves forward, then it'll return true. This condition will actually be false because true doesn't equal false, and it won't do anything in the loop. But if the turtle if the turtle fails to move forward, then it will do this stuff inside of this loop, and it's going to keep doing this stuff inside of this loop as long as the turtle fails to move forward. So there's two main reasons that a turtle would fail to move forward. One is that there's a block in front of it, in which case we'll call the dig forward function, which will try and remove any blocks in front of it. The other reason is that there could be a mob or a person in front of it, in which case we'll call turtle.attack. So as long as the turtle isn't able to move forward, it's going to try and rectify that situation by calling dig forward and attacking. So uh, that's what that does. And then I can end the move forward function here. You'll notice we use end both for functions and for loops to, to, to terminate them, and for, uh, for if clauses. Okay, so those are all the functions we need. Let me recap them real quick. We have refuel, which selects the first slot and refuels. We have dig forward, which tries to dig forward as long as there's a block in front of the turtle. And we have move forward, which uh, checks if it needs to refuel and does so if it does and then tries to move forward, removing anything that might be in the way. Okay, so those are our functions. Then the code that the program actually runs is not going to be inside a function. I'm going to have a while loop that's always going to run, and I'm just going to call the move forward function. So when you're looking at a, at a piece of code, it can be really easy to tell what it does if they use functions correctly, because all you have to do is say, okay, what is this program going to do? Well, there's only a little bit of code that's outside of any functions. It's this while loop, and basically it's just going to move forward forever. Okay, it's really easy to just tell that that's what the that's what the program does, even if you didn't know what it did. All right, that's all I want to do for the program. I'm going to exit it. Uh, let me take, change the time today. So I'm going to create some obstacles here. Let me get some sand. Uh, and I'm going to put some sand in front of this. Now, as he tries to dig, the sand is going to fall. And hopefully his program should uh, should be able to figure that out and get through it. And then I'm also going to put a squid down here. Hopefully that works. Yeah, okay. So the squid's just going to stay in the way. And the turtle can't move the squid, so he's going to have to attack the squid to death. Or move it out of the way, at least. Okay, so I'm going to call my forward program. The turtle starts moving forward. He encounters obstacles in his way. And as soon as he clears the obstacles, he moves forward. And now he's stuck. He tries to attack the squid. And he moves forward when he can. And then continues to move forward. Now if I get in his way, he's going to try and attack me. But he can't actually attack me because I'm in creative mode. If I uh, put my game mode at zero, we can see he starts to attack me. And knocks me off. And then can keep moving. So this program is much more robust. Uh, and is able to move forward a lot better than than before, because remember with the bridge program, the turtle was trying to move forward, he hit the, the dirt and just stopped moving because it didn't have any way to deal with that. So these these uh, these functions that we've used in, oh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, these functions that we've used in this forward program are going to be useful in a lot of programs, basically wherever the turtle needs to move. So uh, functions are usually groups such that they are very reusable. Okay, so now there's something else I want to talk about with functions, and that's return values. Remember, I was talking about turtle.forward is a function that returns true or false, depending on whether the turtle was able, able to move forward. Well, what does that mean? That means when you call it, uh, that the expression here kind of turns into true or false when, it's, when you actually call it. So, um, Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to actually create a function that returns a value. Okay, so I'm going to make another function up here called needs fuel. 
and uh, this is gonna this is gonna check if the turtle needs fuel. If it does, it will return true, and if it doesn't, then it'll return false. So if turtle dot get fuel level is less than ten, then we return true. That means that needs fuel will just turn into the value true when you call it, if the turtle in fact doesn't have much fuel. And we'll use else, like we did before, uh, we'll return false, because that means that the turtle has plenty of fuel. We'll end the if statement and end the function. So now, uh, instead of, uh, in here, instead of saying if turtle.getFuel level is less than 10, we can say if needs fuel then refuel. This is actually a lot easier to read. This almost uh, this almost looks like English. If if the turtle needs fuel, then refuel. Right? That that makes sense. Those are instructions that pretty much anyone could follow. So just to cap it off, we uh, we used the the word return in order to indicate that we we're returning a value, and return true here, return false here. And that makes the function, whenever we call needs fuel, it's going to basically the code for needs fuel will get replaced with true or false depending on the conditions. All right, and so the, func the, the program will operate the exact same way it did before. Now, I had another, I had another program in here. Uh, what was it? Item count. And I want to edit that real quick uh, just to show another way that you could use uh, return values uh, or just another example, I guess. So... Here I count f uh, all the slots. I, I use a for loop to enumerate uh, the variable slot and have it take the value 1 through 16 and then run this code. So instead of doing this all here, I'm going to create a function to do it. So I'm going to create a function called count items and we're going to use a lot of the same code. We're going to initialize a, a variable called total to 0 and then we're going to do the same thing for slot equals 1 comma 16 do uh, total equals total plus turtle dot get item count slot so it's the same code whoops I misspelled total it's the same code that we had before but we're going to do it in a function and then at the end of the function we're going to return total and I'm going to end the function so, I just want you to recall that um, when you say total equals total plus something else, it's going to take the old value of total, it's going to add something else, and it's going to store that back into the variable total. So we're just going to get a running count here, and that's why it's called total. Uh, it's kind of a running total. And then at the end of the function, we've got a running total for all of the slots in the turtle, so it should count all the items in the turtle. So now we don't need any of this code here. I can just delete all of this. Uh, it's the same code, but I've just grouped it into a function that we can reuse. So if we want to, if we want to count the items in the turtle's inventory multiple times different places in a program, this is going to be really useful. And then we can replace total here because total isn't a variable here uh, to count items. So now this program is just one line. It's I have, uh, and then it appends count items, and then it appends items, uh, the string, onto that. It's just one line, and and it calls this count item functions, counts items function. Um, in this case, that wasn't really useful. It didn't really decrease the size of the program or anything, but I think it did uh, make it just a little bit more clear what's going on, uh, because you can see the one line of the program here and what it, what the program's doing. And then if you want to drill into more specifically what the count items what the count items function does and exactly how it determines the item count, then you can look at the, the function for that and uh, and see what it does. So when you're analyzing programs, if it's broken up into functions, that's often very, very helpful for just analyzing a little bit at a time. And uh, we run that item count program, it still works. So uh, there's more to functions, and functions are a extremely important topic within programming. Uh, next time I'll talk about arguments to functions, which is something you have seen. I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna tell you everything about it in this in this uh, 
episode because I just wanted to cover the basics of functions. But for instance, um, when you say turtle dot select one, and you have these one, this one between the parentheses, you're giving the function a piece of data to work with, and this is called an argument. It's just something that you give to the function, and the function might behave differently depending on what arguments you give it. So we'll we'll cover that in the next episode. And when you're able to use arguments, you, it's actually be, actually makes functions a very very powerful tool for making your code more useful, uh, making the functions that you write reusable in different programs, and and allowing you to write less code in general, uh, and make it easier to maintain your programs as you want to add more features. So hope you learned something, and join. Hope you join me next time. Thanks for watching.